Hi everyone, this is Math 6, Lesson 8-4, Display Data and Frequency Tables and Histograms. In this lesson, we'll make and analyze frequency tables and histograms. Let's start with Explore. The students um, in a sixth grade class recorded the number of letters in their first and last names combined. Hello, my name is... Justine Marcello is um, one we can see um, the number of letters in sixth grade students' names are recorded here. You're going to count the letters like J U S T I N E dot dot dot, right? Um, and so we got numbers 15, 11, 14, 8. 10, 15, 17, and then, and so on, right? So how can the data be organized? Describe one way to organize the data. You already learned some ways to organize and represent the data and summarize it, right? What's one way to organize the data? You already know you can, organize them from least to greatest, right? In order to figure out the median, minimum and maximum, it's effective to um, organize um, from the least to greatest. So you can say, one way to organize to list the numbers to greatest. Or you can organize um, in a tally chart. Or you can also organize a tally chart. You know, like count how many numbers each have, right? So 15, how many 15, how many 16, and, and so on, okay? Describe another way to organize the data. Oh, um, so you can put one here and tally chart here, or if you can, um, if you can figure out another one, it's called a frequency table. Um, we're gonna, yeah, so the tally chart could be made into a frequency table as well. Another way the data can be organized, a frequency. How frequent each number uh, appear. Part C, compare the two ways. Well, we got three ways here. What do you notice about the data in each way? Okay, what do you notice? So if you list the data from least to greatest, you can see easily um, the minimum and the maximum, right? What about a tally chart? What can you see easily? You can see which number appears the most. So it depends on which information you want what you're what you, what you're gonna prefer okay so um when we organize the data from the least to greatest you can easily see the smallest Biggest, biggest number and the median. Okay. When we organize the data with a tally chart or a frequency table, we can easily see which number is repeated the most okay. or which number is which number appears the most 
All right. So those are different ways we can represent um, the data. And, and we need to be strategic about that because we want to use the data um, in our whatever our, our reason is to use the data for it. All right. On the bottom, let's look at focus on math practices. What generalization can you make about the data set? What generalization can you make about this data set? So if you organize this using um, both ways from least to greatest, we have 11, 11, 12, 12, 11, 11, and 12, 12, another 12, and then, wait, we forgot 10 and eight. So let's start this over. Eight, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, and then 13, 13, and then 14, 14, 14, 14. Oh, we forgot nine. So nine and eight and another 10. Okay, 10 here and then eight and nine. And then, so uh, moving on, we got 15, 15, and 15. And then 16, 16, and then 17 and 19. Okay, that's from least to greatest. What about frequency table? You can, you can put the numbers that you have. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then you can tally up. We got 1, 8. We're going to use the tally points. 1, 8, and 1, 9, 2, 10, 2, 11, 2, 12, what? Wait, 3, 12, and then 2, 13, 2, 14. 315, 216, 117, no 18, and 119. Okay. So looking at that, which number appears the most? We can see that both 12 and 15 appear the most. So we can say, oh, then um, the mode could be 12 and 15. So what genera generalization can you make? The values, looking at the maximum, minimum, and maximum, the values in the data set are between which numbers? 8 and 19. And the most common value is 12 and 15, right? 12. All right, so the essential question for this lesson is how can a frequency table or a histogram help you organize and analyze data? So we're gonna learn another method of um, organizing and analyzing data. Let's look at example one. We're gonna make a frequency table and a histogram. Mr. Maxwell timed the cross country team in a two mile run and recorded the times in, a, in the table shown. He wants to analyze the runner's times. What is one way that Mr. Maxwell can organize the data? So look at this table. We got team times. And then we want to we want to organize this data, right? So a frequency table shows the number of times a value occurs in each category or interval. So you don't so all these team times are going to be very different because um, the seconds, 
just passed by really quickly. So in this, for this data, we're gonna organize it using intervals. Intervals mean from which number to which number. So any number that's between this and that will be your interval, okay? So running times, 14 to 15, 59. 16 to 17, 59. 18 to 19.59. So basically every two minutes, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have an, another interval. So 16.45, the first one is between 16 and 17.59. So that's one tally. 14.25 is between the first one. So that's another tally for that. That's one tally for the first one and so on. So you're gonna, for each number, you're gonna put them in a category and then tally them up. And the frequency is the total number of tally. So four, six, two are the, the frequency numbers for each intervals, okay? So Mr. Ra Maxwell can set up time intervals for the data and then count the number or frequency of time for each interval. Then he can use a frequency table to make a histogram. So that's a frequency table. Histogram is a graph that uses bars to show the number of values in each category or interval, okay? You're gonna use bars for hist uh, histogram. And frequency table usually should have a category or an interval, okay? So team times is your title for this histogram. You need a title, okay? Then you need a label for one variable. And then you need a label for your for your horizontal variable. Okay. The number of runners, zero to ten. And then minutes, the intervals, 14 through 15, 59, and so on. And then using the frequency table, you're gonna you're gonna draw a bar four for the first one, six for the first one, and then two for the third one, okay? So four, first, six, second bar, and then third, two for the third bar. How is a histogram similar to and different from a bar graph? Do you know what a bar graph is? You have a bar graph like that, right? So both use bars, you can see bars, uh, varying heights to show the data. But in a histogram, the data are grouped in equal intervals, okay? With no space, there's no space between bars. And the histograms are used to display numerical data, while bar graphs can be used to show categorical data, okay? So usually bar graphs are going to be, um, more like categorized, so like more words, right? And then, but then histograms, um, it's mostly, it's usually gonna be numerical. And also there's no space between the bars. Okay. So bar graph would basically look like this. Um, try it. This histogram shows a different way to represent Mr. Maxwell's data. Fill in the boxes with appropriate times and shade the bars for the last three intervals. How have the intervals changed? Okay. So fill in the boxes with appropriate times. So this is using the same data here, but we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna um, use a different way to represent it. So 14 to 14.59 is a, is a different interval, right? So we have two that are between 14 to 14.59. So this one and this one, right? And then 15 to 15.59, we have one, two, another two. And then 16, so looking at the pattern, what is the blank here? What should you write in this blank? 16 to 16.59, yeah. So we're gonna group them in minutes instead of two minutes. So 
So 16 to 1659, we see 1645, 1652, and 1603. Okay, three of them. And then 17 to 1759, how many do we have? We got one, two, and three, 17 to 1759. So another bar graph, another bar right next to, right next to that. And then we got 18 to 1859, and that is just going to be one. So a bar graph or one number of runner. And then 19 to 1959, finally, that's also one player, one runner. Okay. Yeah, so how have the intervals changed? What is the difference? The intervals, the original intervals were by two minutes. So you have three bars, but here we changed it to one minute. So each minute. So we got six different bars. Okay, let's record that. Intervals now one minute long instead of two minutes there are half the number of values the one minute intervals as a two minute convince me how is the analysis of the information displayed different between the two histograms? We also talked about this. The histograms show frequencies of equal intervals. So if different intervals are chosen, the histograms will look different show the same data, okay? So histograms may look different depending on the intervals, um, even though you use the same data, okay? So keep that in mind. There are different ways to represent data for histograms. Okay, are we ready for the next page? Example two, use a frequency table to solve problems. Zach surveys a group of middle school students and asks them how many texts they sent yesterday. The table shows the results. So then the number of texts from 0 to 19, five students. 20 to 39, four students. 40 to 59, 10 students, and dot, 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 right? So when you survey, um, they, might only, they might have these options and they'll say, oh, um, I texted 10. 10 times, so I'm gonna answer this one, zero to 19 and so on, right? Yeah, so the greatest number of texts sent between 60 and 79, do you think? No, there's greater number here in the interval, 80 to 99. So the greatest frequency is 11, wait, the greatest number of texts sent. The greatest frequency is 11, but the greatest number of texts sent is between 80 and 99, okay? The frequency is different from your number of texts, okay? So most people, um, the more people sent texts between 60 and 79 yesterday, but there are students who sent more texts. That is not the greatest number of texts they sent. Part B is the lowest number of texts sent between 20 and 39. Again, four is the least frequency you have. So the least number of students answered that they sent text between 20 and 39, but is that the least number of texts sent? No, um, the lowest number of texts sent is between zero and 19. Obviously, if you send no text, that's going to be less than 20 
to 39 times, right? So frequency is different than how many numbers of tests. So let's look at try. How many students sent between 20 and 59 texts? So now we want to figure out between 20 to 35. You know that 20 to 39, there are four people. And then 40 to 59, there are 10 people. So from 20 to 59 texts, how many people total do we have? 10 plus 4, 14. So yes, 14 students would be the answer. Okay, example three. Use a histogram to solve problems. The histogram so shows the number of points that Kendra scored during each basketball game she played last season. So points Kendra scored, number of games are vertical, number of points are um, horizontal. So between zero to four points, we got three number of games, three games. Five to nine, none. 10 to 14, six games. 15 to 19, two games, 20 to 24, one game. So how many games did Kendra play last season? So total, how many games? We're counting the vertical, vertical numbers, right? So number of games. So three plus six plus two plus one is 12. So Kendra played 12 games, okay? And how many games did Kendra score from five to nine points. There's no bar, which means it's zero. So Kendra did not score five to nine points in any games last season, okay? So let's look at try it. Does the histogram show the mode of the number of points Kendra scored in the games? Explain. Does it show the mode of the number of points Kendra scored in the game? So do you know which point appears most frequently? Mm, if we're talking about intervals, maybe, but specifically a point, not really. We don't know the specific points here, right? So zero to four could be any of those numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, right? We don't know specifically which point appears the most because we don't know the specific points, right? So no, the histogram shows ranges scored, not individual. So yeah. If you want to figure out mode, then this is not a good, good um, way to look for data. All right, but that is histogram. Let's summarize our lesson. Data displays can be used to help make sense of data. So another example, bags of popcorn, bags of popcorn sold each day could be tallied up um, during the intervals shown and then um, using the frequency table 1047 you can draw a histogram so the number of bags the intervals are usually going to be the horizontal bar okay and then the number of days is going to be the vertical bar and then use the bar to um to display the data all right, that was lesson four, displaying data in frequency tables and histograms. In the next lesson, lesson five, we'll summarize data using measures of variability. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask Ms. King. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.